Um, so the next lecture uh, is going to be given ah, by Irad Ben Isaac. He's a scholar of Yiddish literature, currently completing uh, his PhD dissertation on the topic of the Yiddish Bildungsroman, in which he analyzes novels by Mendele Moichersforim, David Bergerson, Joshua Perl, and others, in the light of the Bildungsroman genre. Irad Ben Isaac studied at the Freie Universität in Berlin and at Tel Aviv University. At Tel Aviv University, Irad completed his master's degree in Yiddish literature and culture with a thesis on Melech Ravitch's vegetarian poetry, about which he will speak us today. An article based on Irad's MA thesis, titled I am a vegetarian, the vegetarianism of Melech Ravitch, has appeared in the edited volume Jewish Veganism and Vegetarianism of State University of New York Press in 2019. Irad is currently working on a monography in German on Melech Ravitch, vegetarian poetry that will appear in Ganz Verlag Berlin. The title of his lecture today is From the Battlefield to the Slaughterhouse, Melech Ravitch, Vegetarian Evangelium, 1921, as a draft for the new Yiddish poetic. Thank you very much. Please. Hey, uh, hello. And, uh... Thank you very much for the kind introduction and thank you very much for uh, coming. I will speak today indeed about uh, Melech Ravitch, one of the co-founders and members of the Chaliastre. And especially I'm going to discuss uh, what Ravitch called his vegetarian poetry, Vegetarische Lieder, uh, which most of them appeared in, uh, in what he called Vegetarische Evangelium, that today uh, Shlomo uh, Groman has already uh, mentioned. They, uh, and, uh, they appeared in uh, his uh, poetry volume Nakate Lieder in uh, Vienna in uh, 1921. Now I would like to begin with just uh, reading one of uh, Ravitch's uh, Vegetarische Lieder, the one poem that he named Prologue. Uh, which opens the section of his Vegetarisch Evangelium, the closing section of his uh, 1921 uh, poetry, Nackete Lieder. Prolog. Von der unendlicher Liebe zu Freiheit, komm ich bei von der Wogen. Wenn seine Räder schlugen on, tanzen dick auf städtische Steine und Blut hängt von die weiße, lange Lämmerhor. Von der unendlichen Liebe zu Freiheit komm ich befreien dich, Kreatur. Leb euch dem Zar von dein Leben, leb euch dein Neut. Und es kommen wird der Teut zu dir, soll er sein dein eigener Teut. Was geht er mich an? Nur streckt mir nicht entgegen den willenlosen Hals und streckt mir nicht entgegen dem brechendigen Blick. Als ich soll ihm euch schneiden mit dem Stolzschnitt von meiner menschlichen Kultur und ihm zerbeißen mit die Zähne von 14.000 Jahren. Wer freund, was bist du Schwester von mein Neut? Von der unendlichen Liebe zur Freiheit komm ich befreien dich, Kreatur. We are familiar with uh, Melech Ravitch, at least from the iconic photograph of him as a member of the Chaliastra group uh, that we all gathered here to mark its uh, centennial anniversary. Melech Ravitch was uh, a, pivot, a pivotal, prolific, and very fruitful uh, writer who published over 40 books in different genres. As a cultural activist, Ravitch was highly involved in most of Yiddish literary uh, endeavors and institutions in interwar Poland. A part of being a member of the Chaliastre, uh, Ravitch was editor and uh, at the journal Die Vogue, The Scale, 
He was also the executive secretary of the Association of Jewish Writers and Journalists, uh, known as uh, Thomas Kier 13. And he was the co-founder and co-editor of the influential weekly Literarische Blätter. Rabich was also one of the main documenters of the Yiddish Literature Republic of uh, interwar Poland. And he documented Yiddish lit literary and cultural persons in his lexicon for Yiddish figures, as well as in his semi-fictional autobiographical trilogy. Das Meisterbuch von Mein Leben is the name of his uh, autobiography. Also, Ravitch's uh, large archive can be found in the Israeli National Library in uh, Jerusalem. Concerning his uh, vegetarianism, uh, which he was very enthusiastic about, I found in uh, his archive in Jerusalem different files that uh, Ravitch dedicated specifically to the subject of uh, vegetarianism, with letters and lists and documents and uh, journal articles that he dedicated to the, to the subject, and he chose to label as uh, vegetarian uh, files. Uh, all of them uh, kind of in green color. Uh, now I will say something about uh, Naked Leader, uh, which appeared in uh, 1921. Um, maybe I'll say well, one, one couple of more things about his vegetarianism. Uh, he describes with a lot of passion his uh, vegetarianism and how he became vegetarian in the first place. In uh, one night in uh, Vienna, when he was just 18, uh, new in Vienna and all excited about the new uh, freedom and uh, chances for uh, self-exploration in the new uh, big city. He, he talks a lot about the guy who converted him, using this uh, verb, converted him into vegetarianism, a guy in Vienna called Jakob Funkelstein Rosner. And uh, I suggest that the way Ravitch describes his friend, uh, Jacob uh, Funkelstein Rosner, is the way that we should understand uh, Ravitch's vegetarianism. Funkelstein Rosner was a young poet, a yeshiva bocher, who left his Galician shtetl and moved to Vienna because of his uh, admiration of writers in German languages, language like uh, Stefan Zweig or uh, Franz Werfel. Fuckelstein Rosner was a homosexual, urban, bohemian, living between Yiddish and German culture, who decided to write his poetry in German, even though coming from uh, the Yiddish uh, world. And this is how we may understand the veg vegetarianism and vegetarian poetry of uh, Melech Ravitch in his Vienna decade. Uh, as we, we can understand, is uh, vegetarian poetry is something uh, queer, urban, very much inspired by new trends from the German-speaking world. We can see uh, Melech Ravitch also as a ideologist, a serial ideologist, and he was very inspired by different uh, ideologies, uh, like uh, Spinoism, pacifism, uh, territorialism, uh, Yiddishism and uh, his vegetarianism was one more uh, for him very exciting uh, ideology that inspired him. So again, the great part of Ravitch's uh, vegetarian uh, leader appeared in his poetry volume Naked Leader, which means naked uh, poem, a very impressionist uh, name. A poetry volume that Ravitch published in uh, 1921 uh, which was the last year of his Vienna decade, and just before he moved to Warsaw and became a part of the Chaliastra in 1922. In, his, uh, in this uh, poetry volume, Ravitch uh, devoted a large space to his vegetarian-themed poems in the last chapter called The Vegetarian Gospel, uh, Vegetarisch Evangelium, uh, the, the last one. The poetry volume, Nakate Lider, was considered by Nachman Meisel to be the most representative example of the new Yiddish modern poetry. Nachman Meisel, 
the Yiddish editor, critic, and cultural activist, wrote that previous Yiddish poetry was a poetry of soft-hearted harmony, sentimentalism, and tender feelings, while the modern Yiddish poetry of the post-World War could not stay in its uh, small, narrow world. The new Yiddish poetry, said Meisel, had lost much of its inner harmony, and the voice of the new poetry sounds more like a scream breaking out of the heart in, into the world. Rather than gentle rhymes cuddled in love and pleasant harmony. Meisel described Ravitch's Nakati leader as camp leader, fighting song loaded with militant social criticism heading out in all directions. It was a poetry of oisof, of exclamation and outcry. And indeed, Ravitch, uh, Ravitch wrote Nakate leader and his vegetarische leader as a part of it during an extreme time of his life, a Sturm und Drang time of his life after the World War, and also on the personal level after the suicide of his older brother, which he couldn't uh, prevent even though he had tried. This new kind of uh, tone and style that Ravitch developed became a part of the direction of the Chaliastre. Ravitch's new artistic uh, agenda resonates, for example, in one of the manifestos of the Chaliastre, the well-known Proclamierung of Uritz V. Greenberg in the avant-garde journal Albatross. Uh, in 1922, one year later, one year after uh, Nakate Lider. In Albatros, in his manifesto, Greenberg talks about the Yiddish poets after the First World War. Greenberg talks about the Yechidim, welchesenin in Sturm und Drang, geistig ausgewachsen, und Yiddische zugewachsen zum Universellen. Saying that the new Yiddish poets tragen auf die nackete seire places tunkeln globus wei. The new Yiddish poets carry the weight of the world on their naked shoulders. The globus wei, the Weltschmerz. Greenberg talks about the world on their naked shoulders, the globus wei. Uh, and the, uh, the Yiddish poets uh, that were shaped during the war, referring to German terms such as uh, against Sturm und Drang and Weltschmerz, Globus Bay, saying that the latest events of the world pushed them, the new Yiddish poets, to universalism and to new aesthetics. This new aesthetics, uh, say Greenberg, uh, and this new poetry was groisam, chaotic, and blutendik. Greenberg finishes his uh, manifesto, his uh, proclamierung, uh, stating against what he called uh, schund imitatia and, uh, and uh, sen sentimentalism, and far them freien, naketen, blut of chvaliendiken menschen oistruk. Uh, Again, very similar uh, aesthetics or very similar sound uh, uh, like, like what uh, Ravitch expresses in his uh, Nakata leader. I suggest uh, indeed that uh, this element that Greenberg describes in his manifesto of the Chaliastra, they're all elements which appeared in uh, Ravitch's Nakata leader and uh, the guitarist leader in uh, 1921 as a part of it. Uh, now let's have a closer look at uh, the Vegetarish uh, leader, at the uh, Vegetarish Evangelium. So the Vegetarish Evangelium includes uh, five poems. It begins with the prolong that we read, uh, in which uh, Ravitch addresses the animal, the creatur, using the German word, declaring his own intention 
uh, to set the animal free, referring to universal, universal values such as Freiheit, using the German word, and not, for example, Cheres, uh, Cherut. In the next poem, uh, called Pferd, Pferd, Horses, Ravitch tells the story of uh, two horses, two brothers, who are led to slaughter after years of exhausting work carrying wood. In the next uh, poem, uh, also already mentioned today, Fleischfresser, Ravitch tells the story of a goose liver from the slaughter to the plate, and on the way he dehumanizes the meat eater using the word, uh, the word Fleischfresser, meaning uh, carnivore, a word or verb which usually used for animals only. Uh, fressen and not uh, essen. In the next poem, Neut Schritte, Ravitch tells the story of a cow uh, that has just gave birth. The cow was wounded, injured in her leg when she made a wrong step and her wound leads to her premature slaughter by the drunken uh, village bully called Stach. The last poem, uh, in the Vegetarisch Evangelium is called Ku Kinder, Cow Children. It tells about one night when Ravitch was a soldier in Hungary uh, during the First World War when his uh, landlady brought four calves for Ku Kinder from the farm and uh, tied them to a stick outside of the window where Ravitch was sleeping. Ravitch describes those calves those cow children one by one with their exact age in days and their specific cry. In his vegetarian uh, poems, Ravish develops different means to humanize his animals. One way uh, is the focus on the animal eyes. In the opening poem, Prologue, Ravitch approaches the animal, the creature, and asks it to not, to give, not to give him this heartbreaking look. Und streck mir nicht an Kegen, den brechen dicken Blick. Ravitch portrays the glance of the animal's eyes as a place of expression that evokes strong emotion in his heart and eventually in the heart of the reader. In another poem, Ravitch peers into, into the eyes of a cow and sees expression and emotions. When he describes the cow's uh, way to the slaughter, Ravitch calls attention to her big brown cow eye how, and how it sheds a tear. He talks about animals who have light in their eyes, chayes mit licht eugen, a description usually reserved for only, only for humans. Uh, I will skip some parts because of uh, time uh, issues. Uh, I will mention another indirect device uh, to humanize the animals, uh, which is humanizing their voices, the animal voices, for example, by choosing verbs. Ravitch's animals do not just yowl or crow, but rather they cry or they shout, uh, weinen or schreien, verbs uh, that usually reserved for human beings only. Der stolze Horn schreit in a sharp tone. The proud rooster shouts with a sharp voice. Also the geese express themselves in, uh, in the cold night with suffocated voices of fear, der stickte Angst keules. The coughing and sick uh, young calf is held with somewhat human voice on hust as a stark mit epes a menschlichem call. Another unique way of humanizing animals uh, regarding to their voices uh, used by uh, adapting uh, the voice to the sound to sound like uh, human uh, words. Uh, the seven years old calf, separated from, from his mother, cries through the night, ma, ma, me, which was mentioned today. Uh, so the cow's lowing 
but at the same time calling his mother in Yiddish, Mame. So I suggest that uh, Melech Ravitz's poetry, vegetarian poetry, makes a new literary genre which is enabled by vegetarianism. Uh, this uh, eating praxis enabled looking at the creature, looking at the animal, and identifying with it. Uh, and at the same time, it also allowed uh, the writer to write about uh, war in a sublimated way. Uh, if we talk about uh, Yiddish vegetarian writing, we, we must also talk about uh, earlier Yiddish uh, writing about animals and the sensitivity about animals in writing. Uh, and we can mention the Melda Mochers Feurim, uh, who, who wrote a lot about animals and animal suffering in uh, the Kliatche or uh, Perik uh, Shira, or in different ways in his uh, popular scientific books, Toldot Ateva. Another issue concerning both Mendele and Ravitch concerning their writing about animals uh, is the literary slippage between the allegory and plot or tenor and vehicle when it comes to animal and humans. Uh, Mendele begins with uh, using animals as a metaphor for uh, Jewish humans and ends up making animals protagonists in their own right. In Mendele's bidirectional metaphor, the human stands for the animal, but also vice versa, the animal stands for the human. And such a bidirectional metaphor shapes, the, shapes also Ravitch poetry as a whole. One clear, clear example for this uh, bidirectional metaphor is the poem uh, Pferd, Horses, the second uh, uh, poem. Well, Ravitch tell, he tells here about two horses, brothers, and the way to the slaughter. Uh, and he also, and he also uh, defined it as a vegetarian poem. However, reading in his autobiography, it is clear for us that he wrote his poem felt also about himself and his brother who committed suicide around, around the period when Ravitch wrote uh, this poem. Uh, so again, I suggest that Ravitch's uh, vegetarian poetry is also a way for him to deal with the horrors of the First World War. The war helped, helped him to direct his glance to the slaughterhouse, and at the same time, his bleeding description of the slaughterhouse uh, in, in his poems helped him to write about uh, the war uh, in a non-direction, uh, indirect uh, way. Uh, so in his poems, we see uh, linguistic uh, hybrids, a type of German Yiddish uh, shatnes, words like Freiheit and uh, not, for example, Cheres, uh, Kreatur and not, for example, Chaye or Brie. We see the Germanness of Ravitch's uh, vegetarian ideology and poetry, and uh, we see a confluence of Yiddish and German uh, letter. German language uh, back then in uh, Vienna meant for him uh, something universal, a uh, majority philosophical uh, uh, associated with elite Aufklärung as scholar. Well, Yiddish meant uh, uh, a, small, a smaller group uh, or tradition. In this case, uh, it's, uh, uh, using a German uh, vocabulary meant uh, a reference to cosmopolitan imperial Vienna as opposed to his Galician shtetl. Germanizing his Yiddish meant bringing universalist values into the Jewish text and world. We can suggest the vegetarianism of uh, Ravitch as a kind of surrogate religion, or maybe a substitute for uh, religion, uh, or uh, maybe just a better religion based on uh, universalist secular humanism. 
However, the way in which vegetarianism became a surrogate religion for Ravitch was a very, it was made in a very Christian way. Ravitch treats his uh, vegetarian, uh, vegetarianism as a, religion, as a religion and doing so he uses uh, precisely Christian terms. He calls his poems a uh, vegetarian evangelium, uh, a Christian term, maybe a reference to Tolstoy. And he talks about, uh, he talks a lot about converting. Uh, he talks about uh, another poem, poet who converted him into vegetarianism. He talks very proudly about uh, the way he himself converted uh, Isaac Bashevi Zinger into vegetarianism. And he talks about uh, being a missionary, a missionary of uh, vegetarianism, all uh, terms uh, which are very Christian. Uh, however, I will uh, sum up. Uh, Ravitch's vegetarian poetry from Vienna of the 1921 was shaped by the First World War and at the same time by the German-speaking world of the time. His vegetarian poetry enabled new kinds of sensibilities and ways of expression and it demanded new style, a new tone, a new thematic and helped in shaping the modern Yiddish poetry and as a part of it, the agenda of the Chaliastre. Ashenem Dank. Thank you very much, Irad. I see a question from Mark and from Shlomo, but I saw before Mark, so Mark. Thank you, Irad. This was really, really, really terrific, and I'm looking forward to reading more. Um, a couple of bibliographical comments. With, with respect to Mendela, there's also the Toldos Yantar Kalbala. Totally, yeah. Which uh, yeah, was really, really, yeah. And, and I would also suggest maybe Sholem Alechem's Der Pakishif to Schneider, uh -huh, where it's you. the goat that has the agency, not the Schneider. Yeah, so yeah, that definitely. would be you know, just another interesting byline. Um, with respect to Nakit uh, Bob Dylan in 1965 defines a poem as a naked person. So that just to me is just like, um, so here's my question, and it's fundamental. He talks about converting to vegetarianism. Yeah. Which verb does he use? And uh, in my remem in my gedächtnis uh, is konvertieren, but maybe I translated it in my head. Konvertieren, because in Yiddish you've got two choices, and schmaden is no. the bad kind no, 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 of conversion, no. megayer is no. the good kind, which one he uses, it, this is the million dollar question as to what vegetarianism signifies. Is it, is it, is it going up or is it going down? Yeah, I yeah. think for a lot, of, a lot of radicals in Warsaw in the 30s, it was definitely going up in the same way that Spinozaism is like a new and improved kind of Yiddishkeit. It's, 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 it's more ethical than you know, the rabbis. I, so I mean, I think that there's a lot to be there's a lot of weight to be put on this on the choice of verb that he's using. So get back to us. We'll reconvene, yeah. you know, so that you can present this again because this is this is money. You know? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. And hey, Shlomo. Was that? Shlomo. Uh, first, uh, I, uh, I, my personal gratitude for the things which I had to skip for the lack of time and the things that the things. Has been heard, has been said here. Thank you, Mama May. That is not a chance that we got uh, mentioned. My, my question is uh, the religiology. In the same book, there is another chapter about uh, the Irish attitude to socialism, to socialism, and coming to the uh, Russia, Russia, the, the communist Russia. And I wonder uh, why Ravich. Uh, uh, they never emigrated to the Soviet Russia as many and many and many uh, uh, Yiddish writers did. If he had so uh, j just uh, enthusiastic uh, support of the Bolshevist theology, do you know that? Uh, uh, 
Sorry, Rada, since uh, there is another question, and I also would like to ask a question, yeah. but the time is not so much. I suggest that we ask the question, and, uh, and then you try to yeah, answer all of them. Okay, so please, no, you first. I just have a short one. Um, beautiful stuff. The, your description of Neuschritte uh, reminded me of uh, early 20th century short story by Berlichevsky, Paradigma, which is very similar from what I remember from reading the poem. And I'm wondering, do we know if the, um, he was reading Berlichevsky? I know the story was very influential. Uh, no, I don't know if you read Berlichevsky, thank you for this reference, but I just realized that maybe it was like a common thing in a reality, that if uh, a cow or an animal is uh, injured, then you, it leads to its premature... Uh, yeah. yeah, but thank you. Do you want to answer him, or, or uh, I make my yeah, question? Yeah, you can make. Okay, now, I, I just wanted to... Um, I wanted, I have a question, but also a short remark. Creatur uh, appears in Western Yiddish, uh, but, um, and also, um, you know, Perek Shira has a long tradition in uh, Western Yiddish and older Yiddish. But what I wanted to say, when, when I saw Creatur, this is perhaps just a crazy suggestion, uh, association, it reminded me of uh, San Francesco, il Cantico delle Creature, the song of the creatures uh, that was uh, not only the first one of the first poems of Italian literature, but I'm sure that it was known um, because um, I believe it's um, it's known in all languages and cultures. But um, and um, and I wonder that if this. Uh, Christian words that he chooses. Uh, you, you mentioned rightly this uh, shifting between universalism, but this universalism that uses a Christian language, uh, this is very strong because Christian terms usually are taboo in Yiddish and so on, or are neutralized, or whatever. Anyway, so um, yeah, just a suggestion if perhaps he heard about this poem, and thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, maybe I will address your question. Uh, yeah, like you ask why he didn't move to the uh, Soviet Union if he was so uh, enthusiastic yes, about that. Uh, yeah, so I suggest not to take him too seriously and about it and not to expect from him any loyalty to, it, to neither of his ideologies. Because uh, in one period uh, he was very uh, uh, fond of. Uh, pacifism or territorialism, but in the next period he was into vegetarianism and he would be into Spinoism, writing a book about it, but then moving to the next thing. So uh, he went in all, all other, in all different uh, corners of the world, from uh, Kimberley to Canada and uh, South America, but uh, I wouldn't expect from him to, to actually do a, a hard step just because uh, he showed uh, yeah, some ideology. He was lucky enough to do that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. It was really an interesting panel.